we are doing this. So I understand there's some confusion in the community. Our first two budget meetings were taped. The first one was at the high school and the second one was here. Um, basically because we're talking about budget issues, the meetings are chaired by the finance chairman, Peter Leslie. Uh, Peter is speaking to the Lions Club this evening, so tonight's meeting will be chaired by Charlie Greer, who is also on the finance committee. And tonight we'll go through the district-wide accounts. Thursday night we'll do community services, and then the board will have a chance to revisit the entire budget and ask questions about all parts of it that they still have concerns um, about. So uh, I'll turn the meeting now over to Charlie Greer. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that we will continue to use the format we've used in our last two meetings. Uh, the superintendent will give her, her budget presentation on on system wide and uh, on the system wide, and I think we will follow the same format. If the board have questions as she's going along, they will interrupt her and ask questions at that time. At the end of her presentation, we will then ask the public for any input or questions that they may have on system wide accounts. Okay. Superintendent. Okay, it's not exactly a presentation. This is. Once we get over the first overview, we just sort of plow our way through line by line and try to answer questions and clarify and call your attention to a few things. I've also asked Dean LaBelle, business manager, to join me this evening because many of the items in this part of the budget are specific to the business operations. And we have given you, I think, some handouts tonight. Um, one will be the energy accounts, and when we get to that, uh, Part of the budget, I'll ask Dee to go through that with you. We also, you had asked from an earlier presentation for us to give you a list of the computers that are in the budget, specifically um, computer by computer, what departments and so on. We have two lists here. Most of the requests are coming from the high school and were covered in the uh, initial high school presentation. And then you also have a um, memo from the middle school indicating what their requests are. Excuse, excuse yes. me. It, this isn't the plan. This is just a list. This is just a list. No, we do not. I think one of the things that came up that evening was um, an evident sense from the board that the time has come to revisit the original computer plan that uh, I gather resulted in putting the lab at the middle school and the, um, the drawing up of the computer proficiency test, which uh, is required of all districts for the state. Um, actually, that was from the, uh, what did you, what do we call that thing anyway, the legislation of 84, the school improvement legislation. Uh, I think that it is a growing sense among the administration, uh, many of the teachers, that the time has come. The technology, of course, has changed in the last several years. Um, and uh, I think we heard loud and clear your concerns for having an updated plan. This is not it. This is the, uh, simply the hardware and I guess some specific pieces of software to give you a summary of what, of what that was. Uh, it would take us uh, some time, you know, and certainly I would think one of our first steps would be to gather, as we talked about briefly, a good representative group, parents as well as school people who are interested in revisiting the issue and, and uh, dealing with it. However, the high school, Remember, partly through the library, partly through um, some of the departments, particularly, for instance, the math department, technology, and so on, that are using computers right now and how they see the ways in which they can use it, and those are their specific pieces. Okay, you want me to, any other questions on that particular? Okay. Moving on. Uh, District-wide accounts actually is a fairly short presentation. Um, because, although depending on the number of questions, there are plenty of activities behind these, some of them just uh, tons of bits and pieces of data. We'll try to cover them as best we can in the time allotted. I might also note that we have um, put forth a notice that we will follow this workshop with a sh special meeting so that we can go into executive session for the purpose of discussing negotiations and that uh, was not on our original notice, but I just want to note that we had put out through various uh, avenues that we had added that element. The Office of the Superintendent 
uh, piece of the district-wide account. I want to call your attention right off to administration. It looks like we've all gotten a real healthy increase in salary. Uh, that's not true. I'm not asking for any change in my salary status, nor is D. Uh, what is the dollar variance there is explained because we um, have our um, special ed director is uh, on leave this year. He is actually serving as an ISG for the state. They reimburse his salary. With his year's experience, uh, he is, in fact, um, has a higher salary than Shirley Willis, a very able stand-in for Wayne this year. Uh, and in addition, uh, we uh, put into this particular uh, budget account uh, a portion of Mary Grunz's salary, who is working as our uh, certification officer. So that accounts for the two changes. That was covered by certification monies, and we have now lost that, or we're assuming we lost it for this year, and we're assuming that we will be losing it for next. And so those adjustments, um, the difference in the salaries between the uh, uh, one year and the regular special ed director and the piece that used to be covered by certification money for our certification director. Clerical time, I already noted that I was adjusting pay for the actual number of hours that my secretary works uh, and the um, I think frankly there aren't I guess I'd have to ask you to ask me uh, any particular questions in the 900 accounts um, certainly there aren't any major increases a uh, little decrease in equipment we did buy some computers last year we don't have to do that again um, would, do you have any question on any of it? Yes. To the Office of Superintendent, I remember at a previous meeting you had questioned about continuing to be a member of NASDAQ. Mm. Had you, had you <coughs> come to any conclusion yet? Well, we haven't joined it this year. Okay. Do you know what that costs? It was one of my economies. Three thousand? Oh, Lord. Two or three. Mm. In the neighborhood of three thousand. The NASDAQ fee, uh, NASDAQ is a perfectly fine Association of New England um, School Districts. Actually, I don't think it includes anything out of New England, the NE, supposedly New England. Um, and by joining, you do have um, access to the uh, enrollment updates every year. Uh, that service, however, can be gotten for less than 3000 And as far as I could see, that was the only actual service we were getting for that sum. It gives you some access to other things, but you usually have to pay for those anyway. So I felt that that was an economy we could, we do belong to the um, state uh, association. I didn't see any particular reason to duplicate them. So we had dropped that in our current budget. We're not, I did not pay it this year, that's okay. correct. I was just wondering because we still get the newsletter as a board member. So. Well, they, I've been wondering, <laughs> I've been wondering when they were going to catch up okay. with myself. But the, uh, I'm assuming sooner or later they'll realize that we haven't paid it. Um, okay. Uh, any other question on that particular section? Yes. Uh, what What is covered under professional services? Uh, there's some money set aside for uh, the uh, Cato system for the school use for the accounting. Uh, that's around four or five thousand dollars a year. Plus, we, there is a few dollars for uh, should we need to get uh, some engineering uh, fees or consultants and stuff like that. It's mostly for the k system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay, moving on. The next section is one where uh, we put some monies in here. Sometimes they are really building initiatives, but uh, for a variety of reasons, since they may be initiatives that are not yet firmed up, uh, I would be apt to put them in here, even though I hope that they will uh, go forward and certainly have plans to make them go forward. But uh, I'll run down through just what these are. Number one, I have put a $15,000 fund in under staff development uh, substitute account. I mentioned this in my overview as a um, reason I'm putting the money in there is that we have had some discussion. Admittedly, it is not a firm and final proposal, but we've had some preliminary discussion, uh, certainly administratively, and I understand that some of the teachers at the building level have also discussed this. 
uh, about the issue of possibly changing our afternoon release workshop pattern. I know I had uh, some conversations with some of you individually as board members and uh, we will be uh, shortly beginning our discussion for next year's calendar. I certainly had discussions with parents in the community who have been hoping that we would be able to extend our school calendar, uh, add days to the calendar. Unfortunately, what with the budget situation being what it is, and frankly, because we are still negotiating our way through the transition on career ladder, I did not see any real possibility of adding days to the school calendar. Um, obviously, we can discuss that, but I, I didn't see financially a, a clear issue for that. Um, but I know that uh, we have some mixed feelings about uh, the teacher workshop afternoons. Personally, I think it is absolutely vital for any school system to have staff development opportunities. It is clearly necessary. It is the kind of thing that we cannot ask teachers to make changes in curriculum. We're talking about raising standards, trying to be as inventive and creative as we can be to teach intellectually respectable material to all children, the kinds of vision that we talk about. Um, there has been work on curriculum in the past and staff development has taken several forms. There have been some requests for summer workshop time, that is paying teachers to come in and work in the summer. We have some monies in our budget and other cost centers for that. We also uh, have conference lines, uh, workshop lines of one kind or another. We send people to get uh, information. We also reimburse college credits. Those are all staff development issues. But one of the thorniest issues we have, and it's particularly thorny at the elementary level, is how do we get teachers together during the school year to discuss what they're actually doing? For instance, if you're trying out a new math program or a different approach to math, it's really important for teachers to say, how is it going? And to talk to each other about that. Because one of the other issues that I hear raised both by uh, parents obviously by yourselves and also by staff is are, are we do we have some consistency across a grade level do we have some consistency of expectations and standards how can people know that if they don't have a chance to talk to each other we do in fact have meetings after school they are routinely held I don't know uh, couldn't give you a number but I know that every week there are groups of teachers meeting every day in one way or the other we have at the secondary level uh, and to some degree at the middle school level, the student schedule offers some opportunity for staff to get together during their planning periods. Uh, and so there is some opportunity there for teachers to talk to each other during the school day. But for our elementary staff, that's virtually impossible. Uh, first of all, the student schedule is such that although there are specials and the students do leave the classroom teacher for those specials, they are uh, certainly not in a pattern where you can get the right people together to talk about a particular curriculum issue. Uh, so that was why schools have come to the idea of the release afternoon in order to get staff, uh, give staff time to work on those issues as a uh, faculty or as individual subgroups. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work very well because staff is frustrated as I think parents are sometimes frustrated in the sense that the morning, which is school time, is often affected by the fact we have to give children lunch so that cuts back on the amount of time that people have to work on instructional time. And of course, um, the, from the afternoon uh, session on, the kids are in fact not in school. We've had a lot of discussion about that. Uh, I don't want to even raise the issue of cutting back on workshop time without also putting into the budget some provision for another plan. Uh, we've only had a preliminary discussion about this, but the plan would be something like uh, hiring substitutes and giving them training so that we could in fact have orderly release of groups of teacher within the school day so that those teachers at a grade level, those teachers perhaps across grade levels in a planned way would be released to work on specific issues. I know that that's been done here before. Obviously, that's not a unique idea. But what frequently happens is that parents feel, once again, the teacher is out of the room and the student is not having a good instructional experience. Um, more and more, schools are going to have to figure out how to use resources in creative ways. Um, Actually, the pressure on us, and I think rightfully so as a nation, is how to have a longer, more uh, 
time for instructional time for students and we all feel a little uncomfortable about taking that instructional time away for students and forcing us to choose one or the other. Is there some way we can do both? That's what this piece is for. Uh, we do have an obligation to advise and consult with the Teachers Association when any time we change things. You have the um, statutory right as a school board to discuss and adjust the calendar, but we certainly, having started the discussion um, both at the building level and through this process, um, what I'm really surfacing is that it's an issue that I know is one that needs to be addressed, and this, this would be the budgetary piece. It's a modest piece, needs a plan to go with it. We will be discussing it more through calendar with the teacher groups, both formally through the association and informally uh, at the uh, building level, and I'm very hopeful that we can come up with something that will be um, productive for students and productive for teacher time, uh, obviously putting those two things together, productive for the instructional program. Question. I, I like this idea, and I just wanted to go one step further. Does that mean that basically um, when the teachers are released for this time that it will be a, uh, an agreed upon time that might be a month or so in advance, or is it something that uh, is set in May when we vote in the calendar? Or we would May? not, yeah, we would not have, what would be part of the calendar discussion would be how many released workshop afternoons to have. This particular issue would be one of working on um, uh, probably building by building, maybe even grade by grade, um, what would be reasonable hours to plan for. Uh, but it would certainly, to work well, this kind of thing has to be planned in advance. I mean, teachers need a schedule. Uh, we would need to have um, a core of substitutes who uh, are aware, and we have some of that anyway. All of those things are in place. This would be to allow us to make sure we were planning it properly. I do believe that one of the uh, real school reform issues ahead of us is helping teachers learn how to use resources, including other adults. I mean, teachers, we all of us think of teachers as the operational adult in the classroom. Um, but I, I think many businesses would have a hard time running if they didn't work in teams. I mean, there's got to be some way of getting the job done without just always having the one teacher in that classroom. I know that there are parents who are uncomfortable when substitutes come in to release teachers to go to workshops and what have you. I think that's telling us we need to have a plan of action so that the children are still doing what they should be doing in, under those circumstances. That takes a lot of planning. And what we're talking about here is really working on that and coming up maybe, for instance, the first year would be a fairly limited amount so that everybody gets used to it and expanding it um, the following year. No follow -up. Plus, at one point we were discussing maybe reducing the number as opposed to eliminating all. Yes, I mean, this services. is, I, I think that, that, that we need to be realistic. Um, there are many issues here that we want to manage and manage well, both taking into consideration uh, teacher time, teacher um, need for planning, um, and obviously our goal of increasing instructional time. So, so we really haven't said there won't be any more early release days by this proposal. Nope. We're just nope. trying to plan financially for... If I don't put it in the budget, right. it becomes impossible. If we do put it in the budget, it becomes possible. Okay. What's the number of days that we give presently? I know that there are half days, but if half you days. added them up, or out, maybe I should say hours per year. Oh, dear. Per I per don't day. have an answer to that. Does anybody... Is anybody figured out the hours? Is it, it's a half day every month. Is that in September? Is there a workshop in September? Mm -hmm. it's, it's four and a half school days. It's every other week. Four and a half and school. A lot of holidays. It's oh, more at the, at the elementary then. Yeah. I think it's about, about ten four and a half actually. complete days. Okay. And plus, I, plus parent conference I days, I which is a day and a half each. And that's twice a year. So twice so that's a year. But not at the high school in the spring. Right. There are, they, remember the calendar, it's 175 teacher pupil days in five teacher days, or 180 days. So those five workshop days, including the conference days, are not part of the student calendar per se. That doesn't mean to say that Maine shouldn't have a longer uh, calendar anyway, but I'm just pointing out that those five workshop days are in excess of the 175 teacher pupil days. Um, yes. 
I know uh, one, one thing that would be useful to me as a board member, and I haven't discussed this with anybody else, and I, I know also to members um, of, of the parent community, would be to have some idea of what actually goes on during the teacher workshop days. Some, uh, maybe not an agenda in advance, but at least some kind of feedback or a report on, on what's going on during those days. Well, I think there's a, um, uh, certainly I see schedules or see team reports in one kind or another, um, and I'm quite satisfied that they're well used as far as that goes, but I think that the, the concern oftentimes is what is, you know, uh, the day feels like a disrupted day to staff as well as to, I'm sure, to uh, the parent community. Uh, and as we look for ways to extend the calendar and um, not just to extend the calendar from the standpoint of doing it because it needs to be done, but do the real issue here is how do we get people together who need to talk to each other? Uh, and I, I think it's particularly important as we look at uh, uh, math comes to my mind because we're talking about using the teacher workshop days for the primary for math instruction in the last part of this year. Uh, when we don't, if, if we were to cut back on some of that time, when would we do that? Now we can do it at the end of the day, and we do do it at the end of the day, and teachers do those things informally, but um, I can't emphasize enough that it is important to redefine teaching to include the responsibility for planning and for conferring and for uh, making sure that the left hand knows what the right hand is doing. Yeah. I'd be interested also in knowing above and beyond um, pull out time for workshops, how many times teachers would be using subs for other, I don't mean for illness, but I mean for other reasons mm -hmm. to write grants or, or how many other times over and above this would they also be out of the classroom for um, school business? Mm -hmm. I think there's very limited use of that going on right now. That was a um, kind of a factor of the early days of the school improvement plan. There was a great deal going on and I don't know exactly what was going on in Cape Elizabeth, but I certainly know that in other school districts we were <coughs> use of release time for a variety of purposes. Um, we can, I don't think we're set up with a Cato program. There is a program we can use that will uh, summarize uh, use. Uh, I'll check into that. I, I know that it's, um, we can talk about that later. So the two teacher assistants that are still in the elementary budget, mm -hmm. those would also be utilized to some oh, degree yes. to help. Mm -hmm. But they, of course, we, we're also, remember, planning to use those possibly to offset increases in class size, possibly, and I think not possibly, uh, certainly, to help us individualize reading and math programs and to give as much possible attention to individual um, programs. So, I mean, I think we have to be uh, careful that we don't overload two people. I mean, we have a, uh, actually, Funko is a large school if you really look at the number of kids in it. Okay. Volunteer coordinator, I, I put a, this is a very small sum of money, $5,000. I don't think we're going to be, uh, the phone is going to ring off the hook for people to apply for that. On the other hand, um, I felt that it was important to put some money in here. We've talked all year about uh, expanding and formalizing on a system-wide basis. <coughs> Our various building uh, volunteers uh, were very pleased and thankful for the help that they give us. Uh, but once again, we are looking in a variety of ways, how do we make things system-wide uh, and coordination is important system-wide for this. Um, I do believe it is quite an opportunity, and even though that's not much money, the reason for putting it in there is to give that position uh, at least a token sense of it is important and we do look for help. I understand the hospital uses not only a volunteer coordinator, but an assistant coordinator, and they're rather well paid. Is that, does do it or do you happen to know what they are? about the paid part, they're a very extensive volunteer. The, the, the director is paid by the hospital. I mean, I think that it's one of those things that it interests me to see how volunteers are organized in other industries. Um, and I think that the, uh, like a lot of other things, if you don't at least give it some status, it, we, we perhaps are not giving the right signals. This is certainly not enough to excite anybody, but I would also, if anybody is having to watch this, 
uh, I would suggest that it's a wonderful opportunity for, for uh, somebody who may be looking to expand his or her resume. Uh, it's quite a challenge if you go through the whole system and you try to bring um, some kind of, uh, not only the bookkeeping that goes into it, but the uh, just a whole personnel aspect. And so we hope to um, have it in the budget, hang on to it, and move with that by the end of the year so that we'll be ready uh, for the fall. Question? I, I just want to make an observation is that is we don't have to recruit too many volunteers. We seem to have too many, um, or excuse me, I mean, we have as many as we need, and there are more people willing uh, if they know what their assignment would be, and I think it's a very excellent use of funds. And I, I, I believe that we have a very rich source of, That's what of, I meant to say. of volunteers <laughs> in the community. <laughs> people are really... Um, impressive I think and I think but again coordination because I know that what happens people will say gee I'd like to help out with this like to help out with that um, but without somebody to put those pieces together even though it does happen individual teachers now do a lot of that um, and we do have coordinators at the building level who are doing a fine job of calling people and putting them together but once again this is the extra system-wide step that I think is important are there some systems that locally that have oh sure I mean this is not uncommon the um, argument about paying back and forth is gone you know goes around um, and I certainly don't have any statistics to tell you where that is right now at one time I knew um, quite a few but with budget stringencies I'm not really sure where that stands but um, there was a State Department for volunteers <laughs> which has been you know axed by the budget at the state level, but there is an informal uh, group going, and there's a national group. I mean, this is you know, a lot it, of stuff around. It there. would be interesting to hear someone give us a presentation of exactly what they've done, what problems they've encountered, and that kind of thing. I just hate to, to break new ground. We always seem to break well, this new isn't, ground. No, this isn't, <laughs> no, believe me, it's not new ground. Uh, we did have a presentation at the Pond Cove for the Pond Cove parents, um, and um, from Gorham, as a matter of fact. Um, but there are plenty of, of other sites. This is, was not the only one. And again, I, want, I really want to emphasize that, that what's going on here uh, is really impressive. And there are people doing building coordination kinds of things. Um, and I don't want to make this seem to, or in any way suggest that that's not happening. But it is a step beyond that. OK, those are. Two issues that I sort of uh, put in there. Uh, the others, printing, Prime membership. Do you all know what Prime is? New board members? No. Okay. Um, some years ago, a group in the Portland area uh, tried to coordinate the um, buying and renting out of AV audiovisual materials throughout the pretty much the greater Portland area, but it also branches out into pretty much a 17-member uh, group that goes to the Portland Vocational School. Um, this has been a cost savings over a period of time. Um, that's what our membership is. That covers a lot of use of AV materials. They're free to us, and uh, from time to time they become dated, and then the prime um, consortium has to write grants. I know recently there were, a few years ago, there was some concern about them going out because the materials were getting so dated and they really did a good job of um, writing some new grants and getting some new material in and so on. Also we do a lot of fair amount of repair of equipment through them and uh, a variety of related services. Um, it's not a big sum of money and we do use it so I would recommend that we continue with it. Uh, System-wide testing, these would be mainly a variety of standardized tests that we invest in plus the um, the uh, cost of machine correcting. Mm -hmm. um, along with that, several parents have, have asked me over a period of time if we're going to be setting up any system-wide testing. At, for example, the sixth grade this year in math set up testing within that grade for every three months, I guess, to see exactly where the kids are with their math skills and all. Is there any plan to move in that direction system-wide as far as saying, you know, in, in, in the different grades, these are the points in time at which we're going to be testing for various skills? 
Well, I, I certainly think we have to be sensitive to the fact that um, when you're talking about testing, what is the purpose of the test? Um, the standardized tests have lots of flaws, and one of the flaws they have is that they're not really, uh, they tend to be bits and snippets rather than a, uh, a really good um, general uh, individualized sense of what this child really knows. And, and if, you, if, if you do test too much, what you have is a, is a little teach, test, teach, test kind of syndrome. If the tests are not sensitive to what the, what the classroom is actually doing. Uh, you can then have a controlling what's going on in the classroom in ways that are not necessarily good. On the other hand, what we want is good assessment. And that can be a daily thing. I mean, you know, lots of teachers, of course, give little check kinds of um, uh, comprehension checks. Uh, some of it is simple as, did you do your homework last night? Um, uh, but the, uh, I would think that that what that that is truly a major reason for getting teachers together who are working on the same subject, the same grade level, roughly the same kinds of uh, student abilities, because the. Um, it's, it's a kind of conferring among teachers. What are, what are the kids getting out of this? What do you see happening? And so on. That would be the ideal assessment in that type of, of thing. Uh, one of the things we have talked about is cranking up the standard of the tests we use. There is a uh, test both in math and in language arts that we have at least looked at. Um, the high school has some real interest in, and I know Michael Efron has some real interest in, the ERB test. Um, it's a much more difficult level of testing than the usual SRA or even the California. Um, and therefore we have to use it in that context. People have to understand it's, that it's, uh, it's stretching and it would be a while before people could be terribly uh, aware of what it's telling us. We intend to, um, to uh, do something with that kind of thing. Um, then of course, don't forget, we also have the whole issue of uh, performance assessment. I mean, we have, we have good work going on right now with our teachers who've written grants through the USM Partnership on natural assessment. That is trying to do in a variety of ways, uh, I'm mostly familiar with the reading attempts, what, what are, where are the kids doing and how do we get the information for the comprehension that's something other than pencil, pen, uh, paper and pencil test in the normal sense. They have a good deal of interest in the way in which the uh, writing samples are being assessed. So there are a variety of things uh, going on. And I, well, I would have to know better what it is people really think. I assume from what you're saying that that sounds like kind of a dipstick to see if people are getting along as fast as they might. Uh, what I also worry about sometimes with that kind of thing is that maybe they can do it a lot better. Uh, but that's another whole set of issues. Yes. I, I guess one of the things that Jan may have been addressing is that um, the uh, certainly assessment is not clear cut and it is multifaceted. But one of the frustrations is not uh, uh, for parents and perhaps for the school board is not knowing what to expect and when to expect mm -hmm. assessments to be coming in. Right. And so one of the curious questions, or one of the questions for us is. Um, if we're allocating money, sort of like a computer idea, is, is there an overall picture for assessment so that, um, and obviously the answer is, is going to be no, but maybe that's something we could look at in a system-wide issue so that we understand assessment from K to 12 mm -hmm. so that it's not bits and pieces. Well, you know, you get an MEA right. here and here and here and then you throw, you know, so that there's a, a global understanding from both language arts and math maybe just to start off. That, that we would be able to see and have an idea in terms of purchases so that if next year the answer is, well, what we really need is $8,000, we could understand from a global standpoint where we're looking at putting our investment in, into assessment and how we could better do that and what types of resources are needed. I know there isn't an answer now, but that's one of the things that I think that may be helpful to assess. I don't know if that addresses some of the chances. <coughs> so certainly uh, a very important issue. Um, Obviously, we're waiting to see what the legislature does with the um, MEAs. I mean, I guess would be, from what I can gather, that they'll put them yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. I think that's been, it's that kind of concern that, but they don't do it alone. You know, they're an indicator, but they're, they're not the total picture. So assessment is, 
you're right. The need we need a um, system wide plan. Central supplies. This sort of sounds like a laundry. But it's paper. Um, we put in a small amount last year, as we uh, you may recall, those of you who weren't on the board last year, we did remove the uh, administrative piece for career ladder since we are transitioning out of career ladder. That piece disappeared, but we kept the a small amount of money, uh, both for some uh, support uh, workshops and for uh, you see certification admin. We probably ought to drop the queer ladder piece of this because that's really not yeah. pertinent anymore. Yeah. And what that really is is we are assessed a small amount for the area certification for administrators group. We all have to belong to a um, a group that uh, we have to, as administrators. Um, we have to submit our recertification plans to this group. They have to meet. They have some small cost, but we also put a little money in there for staff development for certification. And frankly, I would be looking to this line to support our uh, uh, recommended administrative staff development for the change in the teacher evaluation plan that we gave you at the last board meeting. That's where I would expect to find that. Um, yes. Now, in your, in the office of superintendent, you who does some certification. Well, that's a piece of her salary. She's on teacher salary. I understand. And that. she teaches half time, and the other half she works as uh, basically her focus has been on certification, but she also um, was extremely, we had the uh, exceptionality course, which is system wide staff development. Um, there's a lot of time still going to teacher recertification, uh, although they've stopped giving us the money, we haven't lost the mandate to uh, run support groups, to run a great deal of paperwork involved with that, and it has to go through somebody in the district who is assigned as the certification officer who is not the superintendent. The law is very explicit. I do not even have access to those files, nor do I want to. But the fact of the matter is that we have to continue to run that system, even though the state has taken the money away from us. Can we pull? that half times salary just so that we have an idea of what it's costing us if she's half time teacher and half time certification mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call her administrator no she's you? not administrator she's on a teacher contract that's a teacher contract with time assigned to deal with the certification issues okay but it's half time that's correct okay can, can we just pull that out so we have some idea of what the cost is for her to do that well, it's in the central office. I guess I'm missing okay. something. It's in the central office administration account. Okay. I just I, I want to know what it costs for her to to perform those functions at half time or at half her salary. The half her salary, we can simply list that. Uh, yes, that's what sure. I want to know. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. Chem Safe program. This is something again that there are many mandates on. Uh, that uh, impact us both for classroom use but also for um, maintenance uses of one kind or another um, to instruct our staff and to have programs for the proper use and disposal of various chemicals and uh, uh, chemistry teacher at the high school has been working on that program it's what else goes in that account it's uh, we've been buying some uh, storage equipment uh, namely some storage cabinets uh, the disposal, uh, two years ago we spent like $7,500, which the state reimbursed us 50%. There was <coughs> a grant out there that we got. Uh, but lately we're down to, uh, she's cleaned up a, a lot in the mm -hmm. last year or two. Mm -hmm. But there are a number of, of uh, recurring expenses in this. Uh, maybe That may be a figure a little larger than we have to have, and we can always look at it, but that's a modest sum. We're just keeping it at its current level. We did use a contingency account last year. We just chose to put it in at the level we had it at. Um, uh, it's obviously something you people can discuss. The space allocation move, the 200000 I went through that in some detail in my initial presentation. If you'd like me to re review that, I could. And also handicap access. Now that's a study, frankly it's underway right now. And um, we 
we have it in here because we didn't have it budgeted in this year's account. But we had to start it because, in fact, the law requires us to start at this time. We also think it is prudent for a variety of planning purposes for us to do that. Um, but I'm not sure uh, whether we'll be successful in, in fitting it into this year's budget, and it needs to be budgeted. Yeah. It, this is over and beyond what was done as part of the school space study? That's correct. This is a... What uh, exactly is this covering? <laughs> everything from doorknobs to uh, bathrooms. We, we, the same architects that came in to deal with the space study, who had start, actually started that process, of course, through the space study, picked up what they had done. Uh, they may not need that much. I mean, okay, so that, that information is valid for the purpose oh, of Oh, yes. The they're building on that. Oh, it's the same people working on it, same firm. But uh, they have sat down and shown us what we have to do, and uh, we, they may not use all of the, you know, that's sort of an estimated cost. Uh, but we, we have to have a plan. We have to bring parents into that process, and we need to, um, we are going to have to make some changes. That's why I don't hesitate to put that money in, because even if we, it doesn't cost us that much, I know right off of some things that we're going to have to do. Um, and that's the only place we have it budgeted, except for any, some small pieces that we might get out of the space allocation, work, because we have some things we have to do for that, too. Connie, I'd like to tie both of those things together, and you, you already answered one of my questions. It's listed here as the study, but if the study requires implementation, then those funds can be available. Oh, sure. I mean, we, we, we're just <coughs> estimating at this point. And um, could we revisit the uh, 4627 account after the presentation? I just have an idea I'd like to throw out and Fine. see how it works. She told us <coughs> it, was it wasn't the eighth. Hmm? It was the, the eighth was still in our budget uh, yes. package. It was eighth grade, it's not eighth grade. No. It was still a question that was moving. One of the things that the, the space schools the space study committee didn't do was look at really high schools um, handicap access accessibility problems. That's and, correct. And this is all three buildings, okay. and in detail. The, um, okay, moving on, health services, there is, uh, hopefully there are any major changes here. I know that, uh, Rosemary, you raised an issue on this. I don't know if you want to revisit that or not, but. I do, and we stay, or whatever, and uh, that is, I would like to, uh, First of all, I wanted to uh, ask about the clerical health assistant that's budgeted um, and see if there were uh, enough interest on the board to have a discussion about changing our part-time uh, nursing staff, which is point six uh, at the middle school to a full-time um, position, especially in light of reductions of the life skills health position that's been proposed and uh, have uh, the current uh, middle school nurse take responsibility for uh, integrating the health curriculum and the parts of the health curriculum that was outlined in our proposal into the uh, middle school curriculum. Also, I want to uh, uh, say that I personally uh, would feel very much uh, more comfortable if we had a five-day week nurse uh, in the uh, largest overcrowded school where the most accidents happen uh, in a 10 to 14 year old age group. Statistically on our own um, situation, not generally. It seems to me like the issue is more one of process rather than increasing somebody's time because there are other people like Andy Strout, for example, who are qualified medically in that building to, to help kids. I, I just am not sure if there's, I mean, there very well may be a good process in place. I, I just haven't asked, but, but it seems to me that um, if there are other people there who are able to help when the nurse isn't, that that. Well, one of the people that is proposed to be cut is a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing 
And but, but we didn't have a registered nurse in that position ever before. No, but I mean, that was one of the people that was available. <coughs> and the other thing is, we are uh, asking our current point six nurse to teach uh, how many periods uh, a week or so. I mean, she's in the classroom a lot. Two, two definitely for advisory advising, and then she works in 15 um, classes, and then also her schedule permits her to teach some of the eighth grade classes as well later in the year. So, I mean, it's not just someone sitting in, in the office waiting for a uh, wellness check or a, you know, check my temperature or do whatever. This is something I think we are using uh, this position as an educator's position. Uh, is she unable to accomplish what she needs to in that amount of time? I think she's, she's busy all the time. I think then the question, of course, becomes the two days that she's not there, what kinds of occurrences come up that uh, we need to have assistance dealing with? And I have so done the research. She's prepared and well spent, and she accomplishes a great deal. Medically, yes, and I think it's very important to point out that, uh, with all due respect to Mr. Rick Madden and the outstanding work that he does, uh, that there is no female guidance counselor uh, in the middle school. And I do know from talking to the students that they really do rely uh, on having a, a female that they can talk to uh, about certain things, and I, I think it's a small price to pay. Um, when we're asking um, for health issues to be uh, talked about in science class and uh, in phys ed and, and advisor advisee to have some sort of consistency and accountability to make sure all the kids are hearing the same thing from a trained professional. And I have done the research on how many incidences there are uh, in the middle school that happen routinely and I will tell you that it's uh, more than 10 times on average that uh, the current nurse is uh, used on the three days that she's there and I'm going to presume that those 10, those needs for 10 visits would also occur on the Wednesdays and Fridays that she isn't there. They are simply handled uh, by another person. So the three days that she's in the schools, she's there full, a full day. Okay, the elementary school has a full-time nurse there five days a week. What about the high school? Part-time point six. Is she there three full days a week, or is she there? Mm, I think it's in the mornings. Um, I believe she comes in at ten fifteen. Yeah, I know she's not the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. And she has an assistant. Well, that clerical assistant, however, also is shared at at least Panko. Uh, what are, what are the thoughts about uh, covering the kindergarten moving to the high school as far as nursing goes? I assume you would need some kind of nurse coverage whenever kindergarten's in session. Well, that's going to be something I suppose we'll put on our list for the transition team to look at and understand a little better what uh, our needs, uh, you know, what are the current uh, uses by the kindergarten, I really don't know. Do we ever get beepers for the nurses so that if, if Julie isn't there, for example, at the middle school, that Darlene can be beeped and get over there? That's the a real days? good suggestion. I think we, that came up last week. Uh, I don't think we have. Have we? Darlene covers for us the days that Julie yeah, I think if, if they don't mind having a paper, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. and perhaps what we need is for the, the middle school nurse to be there each day, six tenths of the time, like the, like the high school. You know, well, uh, out of every day for a period of time. You know, it's. It, it, I guess I'm I'm dealing with a set of decisions that I didn't make, so I don't know the reasons why people have necessarily come to this particular schedule. I do want to point out that um, we had a series of meetings earlier this year. Um, we had a couple of follow-up internal discussions about it. Um, frankly, we were concerned about the 
procedures that we were following, uh, how consistent we were, and so forth. Um, the fact of the matter in schools that you have an enormous burden on the frontline people, usually the secretaries in the offices. Um, and we really tried to get to the bottom of our procedures. Were they good procedures? Were we following them? And so on, because we became aware of some accidents that seemed to have fallen through cracks, even though people were individually dealing with children appropriately. Uh, we didn't get the full picture of the information, and so some inappropriate things were happening. Um, that really series of discussions brought home to me the real importance of getting training for um, office personnel. Because oftentimes, the most important thing we can do is to contact a parent. Um, even if the nurse looks at a child or a situation, it is, um, that certainly doesn't relieve us from the obligation of the front parents. Obviously, most, that would be one of the first things a nurse would normally do. Um, I thought it was an interesting question. Mark was there. I don't know if he wants to. And my impressions of this is that, and they, I may be addressing different concerns than what you have heard about, is that the problems I saw were twofold. One was some systems questions, as you're describing, and that is appropriate utilization of the nurse as, as a health care provider um, and how that was addressed. And I, I think those have been um, studied and improved, although I, I don't believe that work is finished. And the second part is, I think, the middle school building itself. And I think that that is a significant hazard. But my preference for dealing with that would be to address the building. Um, I, I didn't, in those meetings with the, with the nursing staff, I didn't get the impression that they felt that they were unable to cope with the uh, health care load that was being asked of them, actually. The only concern was really addressed by the pond code Staff, and staff, so I, I was unaware of those, those extra concerns. I, I think she, she does a terrific job at the middle school, and certainly would love to have more time from her. On the other hand, I don't know that I would be able to justify it in this budget situation. I think my concern is that when the nurse is not there, that the office, the office help that is doing the triaging, needs to have some more training if that's if that's going to be the, the standard protocol well this was certainly because one of the things that came out the of few the accidents team. that have happened then the nurse has not been there i don't think that that the person who's done the triaging has made the correct judgment and and i wouldn't expect her to without the proper training well there it was uh, it was clear in our discussions that we simply have to deal with all of these issues and some we haven't even discussed tonight. For instance, uh, I was rather, I, I really am concerned about the, um, as you say, the building. The building is a booby trap in many respects. We have splinters and rails, even they've been sanded and so forth, but not necessarily, and then we've got some in another place. Um, it's, uh, it's a little overwhelming, but uh, that doesn't excuse us, obviously, from trying to do the best we can in the situation. So I think there are a lot of pieces here, but the training is something we can do, the building thing we're trying to work on. It's up to you, I think, for a discussion on what kind or amount of nursing we can discuss that administratively when we get back. Um, I don't have total answers to that. In all the school districts, I think I've been associated with until this week, uh, volunteers were used when the nurse stringently trained, they could not give medicine, but they could take a temperature and hold a hand and put them on a pillow, and, and uh, it worked very well, and if we're you know, planning on expanding mm -hmm. our volunteer program, uh, that might be. Well, I think we need to be clear about what it is we're looking for. Um, if we're looking for professional advice, and that's part of our protocol, that we, we need to have professional advice, that's one level of issue. If we're looking for a very clear protocol for non-professional health, that is non-nursing health, frequently, of course, again, the building secretary is the one the kids will tend to come to first. I mean, that's, that's very common. Um, the teacher may come with them if they're small enough or there may be, uh, you know, the severity involved. One of the issues we got into um, in the discussion we had this fall was 
so often children don't give us good information. So how, what are the kinds of questions that we are obliged to ask in order to get the kind of information? And that was part of the training that we talked about. Um, you know, that, that you can miss a very important piece simply because nobody knows what happened. Um, it is certainly a very important area. It's a very serious area. I, um, no matter how much nursing help we have, I'm sure there's still plenty of room for improvement in all the other areas that we're mentioning. That's a separate thing. Can I just ask a couple? Do you have, um, you said you had some research. Do you have some, some ideas of numbers of incidents that have happened when the nurse hasn't been there that's been a problem? I don't know if there's any way to do such a thing. <coughs> Well, there, there's this sheet uh, on the counter at the middle school every day that I glance at, <laughs> right? Isn't that how it works, Nancy? Yes. And I did not record the names of the people, but isn't it, would you say 10 is not an overstatement? Or? Yeah, I, I haven't glanced at it recently, but I, I would say that it's not an overstatement. I'd have to go back and double check to be sure, but um, we do have various things, and Darlene has come over and helped us out. I just, I just look at 60 more kids coming into the system. I see 140-ish being moved to a different site. I see someone having to pick up that responsibility. I'm sensitive to reaction time uh, to a situation. And uh, maybe I'm more sensitive than other people because I, I listen to some of the concerns uh, that the middle school kids express. I know that there are an awful lot of kids that go home from school uh, who wouldn't have to go home from school. Uh, if they were given what they need, and they're not going to ask Mr. Madden or uh, Mr. Stroud for it. That's the bottom line. Okay. Moving on. Excuse me. Yes. Just on the budget of nurses and fringe benefits, I, I see that the the salaries went down a, a little under 5%, but the fringe benefits went up 51%. Is this just an adjustment to figures or what? The salaries reflect Loretta there. We had one nurse identified, well, through the process last year where you know, we put certain caps and certain movements, so this is the actuals. As far as the fringe benefits, uh, that was a change of benefits by one individual requesting higher benefits that did not have benefits at the time at, on last year's. And they have every right to do so. I'd also like to, to follow up on Loretta's comment before, if, if we could get some feedback as to why the nurse couldn't be there half time every day as opposed to six kids. I think we'll check the nurse's schedule because, and I could be absolutely wrong in this, but my understanding was that there are always two nurses on the school campus and that um, actually the high school nurse works three days a week and the middle school nurse works three days a week, but they're different. There's one day all three of them are there. The other times are always two on the campus, but we'll double check that. Um, I was just checking the sewer. We were remembering that that's the way it is, but we could be absolutely wrong. Check I do think we need a more efficient communication system, and I think the beepers is the way. Beeper sounds like a real good idea, and it's something we can do right now, I think. Okay, uh, moving on, student transportation. We have already uh, are addressed in my overview that this is an area that we are frankly uh, reviewing because we've had, um, we really do believe we have to make some changes. Uh, a budget climate such as we're in, we have to be careful that we are being cost effective. We are not trying to, um, in any way to create a panic situation. I uh, am sensitive to the fact that in times like these, people wonder, well, are we going to drastically change employment? No, and we'll certainly have discussions with the, the employee unit, as well as uh, general discussions uh, with Sue so Weatherby's help in the um, analysis and assignment of routes and so forth. Uh, however, I would call your attention, we have, in fact, um, reduced the, by through attrition, uh, one driver p position, and we were also uh, reducing overtime. Arguably, I know that in both cases, we could probably take two or 3,000 more 
those are rather conservative figures and they're there because there may be some other issues. I have not really gone through the student transportation account and looked to reduce the lines at the moment because I, I see the reorganization is hopefully improving our efficiency, but we may also have to make some uh, contributions to uh, some of the uh, operations of community services in order to do this. We haven't budgeted anything separate for that. Um, I, you will see when we get to uh, Thursday's presentation, I do recommend that we increase Sue Weatherby's salary by uh, a stipend because she is taking on an additional duty. Um, how successful we'll be in, in computerizing bus routes and assignments and uh, custodial assignments, you know, it's, I'm convinced we will certainly make some big improvements, but um, I haven't tried to eyeball all these accounts with the maximum cost effectiveness in mind because we may need that money in, in other ways. This is, this is a hard one to really question because it involves a reorganization. That's right. And it also involves dealing with a, with a bargaining unit. That's right. Is this something that we, as a board, need to address to you in an executive session about specific concerns? Or, or can, I get, can you give us some idea of what your plan is for reorganization? Well, I again, need to sit down with the unit and have some discussions. But we have had some employee discussions so far. Uh, we started, actually what happened is that we started, uh, Rosemary representing the board and myself met with some driver represent representatives, and Charlie Freeman, the supervisor. Uh, initially, we were really trying to look at a kind of total quality approach. How can we, you know, what are your problems? What can you help us rethink some of the issues? What did become apparent through that is that there were some differences we could make that would be under the uh, rubric of total quality, but frankly, it also became increasingly clear that we had some reorganization issues, um, and those we do have to talk to the unit about in more detail. But in essence, um, the lengthening of the school day uh, a few years ago resulted in uh, apparently some regular overtime. Uh, we have addressed that issue and we feel that, that uh, there is another way to deal with our transportation needs and I'm recommending that we um, lay that out for consideration and I can give you a fuller picture once we, as a board, we talk about negotiations. I really think some of that is inappropriate. It's a little hard for me to judge right now how much of that we should be discussing as if it were a decision we're making in advance. Some of that needs to be discussed with the unit. Some of it is a management issue. Uh, I think I'm comfortable, however, saying that we are a small district. Uh, our bus drivers uh, are only part-time bus drivers. They are also custodians. That's a tough um, combination to assign and make sure that you have a cost-effective and efficient way of doing things. The drivers themselves tell me of their their frustrations when they want to get started doing a maintenance or custodial function when the building has children in it. Uh, it's, it's a classic problem of a school district that tries to combine driving and custodial functions and still have the driver come in the morning, uh, end the day, in the afternoon, and with a few hours in between. It's very difficult to make maximum use of those few hours in between. That's the nature of the dilemma. The discussion we get into with the drivers will be partially, of course, a negotiated issue. Okay. Then your role for Sue Weatherby as far as this transportation, can you explain that? Well, Sue has been very successful in getting a handle on the assignment of buildings to the, um, you know, through community services. All of us, if any group wants to use any of the school buildings um, beyond the school day or on the weekends or uh, during the school day for that matter, that it's all, it all goes through the computerized calendar at community services. The only exception to that rule is that uh, classroom teachers who regularly use a space do not necessarily have to assign it. But it's a space they don't, if it's a space they don't normally use, so do they have to um, reserve it with you? Usually if it's during the school day, it goes into the building administration. Okay, but if it's after school, or in, 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 you know, the different spaces, clearly uh, a cafeteria, for instance, gets used in a variety of ways, and we, we do go through that. So 
um, the expertise that she and her uh, unit have gained in thinking of this as a system-wide issue, we're going to try to tap into that expertise and also Sue's interest in training and total quality uh, in management per se. Um, what can we learn from that kind of rethinking? What, how long does it take us to do the routes? What are the routes? What are the ways in which we can perhaps reassign people so that they are um, able to do the custodial functions that they're not necessarily able to do right now? That kind of thing. Okay, in this 4150 salary of the supervisor, okay, that presently covers the, the transportation supervisor that we now have on board. Mm -hmm. Or is that part of somebody else's salary? I think that's what I understand is the breakdown of this particular account. Okay, this super, you want to explain that? That's part of my salary. Uh, for years past, when, when transportation was reimbursed at X amount, the years ago, they had part of the business manager's salary in that account, it's still there. The variance there is basically the, the, the fringe that was attached as far as salary. It's no longer reimbursed? What they're doing now, Loretta, is that they, they since this year, they sent out a questionnaire in 91, 92, how many miles do you do in district to bring your kids to and from school, basically. We have sent, I think it was 150,000 miles, whatever it came out to. Based on that, they're coming out with a cost per mile, and we haven't seen the results of that because we haven't received a printout from the state yet. Uh, athletics, co-curriculars, travel, that will be eventually phased out of these accounts and into their proper accounts as the state reimburses us. But the business managers? Correct, down the road, correct. What we're gonna do, I think, once we see these numbers is that we're gonna adjust these accounts to what the state will allow us for reimbursement and then put the overage into the proper accounts. Okay, can I see a breakdown of that particular account? Sure. Please. Okay. Anything else in Rosemary? I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure that bus has already been approved. By the state, yes. Correct. And we're taking a different position this year and we're paying it off in thirds instead of in months. Correct. So. Well, when we made an application <coughs> to the state, the, sta the state uh, uh, has four and a half million dollars this year or next year to buy buses. We made a three year application. We tried for two buses, we got approved for one. Uh, this is an estimate based on, on a certain percent that we're going to borrow the money uh, paid over three years. And Andy, when do we need another bus? We're trying to buy one every year. Uh, what we're doing with this one is that uh, I believe we've got approved for a 76 passenger. We have made application and are getting prices right now for a, a 76 passenger with extra storage underneath for, for transportation as far as athletic trips, van or something like that. The additional cost might have to come from the community or through the uh, some of the clubs or something. But we are, it is perfectly all right to add on to the bus. But the request was just the basic uh, 76 passenger. Can I just ask, because I have people in the community ask me this every once in a while, why don't we have seat belts on our buses? No. Why don't we buy well, buses with seat belts? That, that's one of those iceberg issues. It's around Sorry, every I know. <laughs> um, the national, well, I'm not sure what the outfit is called, but the National Transportation Board that looks at school bus issues has claimed for years that the buses are actually safer without seat belts and with them. I can't tell you that's true or not. I just know that the, for instance, the way the seats are built, the height of the buses and so on and so forth, supposedly they are safe. Uh, obviously, if you put seat belts on, there would be some monitoring that would be required, and I think that that's just one of the things that people, however, myself, I watch my grandchildren, they get in cars and belt themselves in. I mean, I would think that we, we now have a generation of children growing up who would do that without necessarily bopping each other over the head with a seat belt switch. When you put 76 seat belts in a bus, you've got, you do have a, a situation that would certainly need some monitoring. Um, I just had read those articles for years, and I cannot tell you that I've ever read any one way or the other that, is, that looks absolutely definitive. And it is an issue that is being looked at nationally by standards boards, 
It's a kind of thing that will eventually be, if seatbelts go into buses, it will, they will go in uniformly because these are buses are only made by really three different manufacturers. And uh, it will be done on a national basis as opposed to uh, the individual ones. Now, our small buses do have seatbelts, that is the van type things, and those are required. The handicapped, I believe, have the key thing. Um, and as a matter of fact, drivers are required to belt themselves, which, you know, there's a logic. Well, I would just you know, note that standard sports aren't always on the forefront of doing what's correct in the safety area. But, um, and, and also we have safety issues on the bus besides bopping kids on the head, so we have people bopping each other with well, book bags and stuff. Maybe we need monitoring, period, the but the, yeah. the, that's the, I'm just giving you the standard right. uh, articles that come out on this with those kinds of pro and con. Uh, I'm somewhat uncomfortable about this issue and have become increasingly so um, I, because I always wonder whether or not we're getting a an explanation from a manufacturer who just doesn't want to be bothered putting the seatbelts in, being a little skeptical. Um, why don't we find out if there are any buses? Get some literature upstairs. Uh, okay. Auburn School Department, uh, I believe all their buses have seatbelts. No, they do. Mm -hmm. I think it is coming in fairly gradually, and it's it's important uh, for us to get you that information and to look at it. Yeah, if we're buying a bus every year, then it should be. Yeah. And for you. I would also have to point out, though, and at this budget, you know, one of the things that um, uh, district decides it's questionable whether we have to buy a bus every year. It is the best economics that you can get into once you get out of the uh, replacing of, of even a small fleet like we have. Um, you certainly do get some economies because you keep your, your buses up. Um, but I know plenty of districts are, are bigger than this one with a lot more miles that don't buy a bus every year. So if we, I mean, that's just a fact. <coughs> on, the, on the funding of the bus purchases, didn't we have a discussion last year with the town council about borrowing? Yes, we did. And they, if you may recall, that was one of the ways in which we were going to get our, our budget down in 5% <coughs> tax increase, and they uh, came out against it. If this, what is clear here, last year there was some confusion as to whether we could, you know, even if we came up with the money, would, would, did we have approval for buying the bus outright? We thought at first that we didn't have it, but then when we, we checked, somehow things had gotten crossed, and frankly that was the approval we had, so we went ahead and took money uh, out of contingency to do that. This year it's very clear, we only have approval for the three-year bond. If the council does not allow us to take out that note, uh, whatever the funding mechanism, because we're not allowed to borrow money. We have to go through council approval for that. Um, the bus is gone. We that was my question. That's, we have to, that's very we clear. Have to present this to the town. This is the only okay. way it goes this year. Um, the other question is on gasoline. Um, you looked at fuel, oil, and electricity for us. I think we we saved something this year too on fuel oil. As of the end of February, Charlie, we've spent two ten thousand four hundred and thirty dollars on bus transportation for uh, gasoline, diesel and whatever. And we've actually budgeted Twenty-eight thousand, correct? So that's okay. They're just analyzing the uh, the in districts. Okay. I haven't done. The you haven't looked at it's current other trips. I can update that for you for Thursday. Okay, if you would please. Uh, I'll have to do an estimate based on what we did, like for mileage from uh, March, April, May, and June for, for last I just year. know the cost of uh, both diesel and regular yeah. is down from what it was when we proposed the budget last year. But a bit down. That's true. However. As we look at next year, true Good question, Mark. We ended up last year with uh, 9091 fuel. We we expended twenty two thousand fifty eight dollars on that one line. But I'll update it for Thursday. Okay. Right. Moving on. Yes, please. Food services that we're simply um, carrying the 
general program subsidy, however, D also will be updating um, that issue. It's possible we were looking at that account. As you know, it is going better this year than it was. And um, depending on what our year-end balance is, it may be that we, we can reduce that number. Um, so far, uh, I guess the board kind of gave us some directives last year that they'd like to see the fund balance come in at, at zero and then start the process you know, for September on or without a, a, a deficit. Uh, look at the numbers before the meeting tonight. There is a possibility we could reduce that account by ten to fifteen thousand dollars, leaving ten or fifteen. Leave it at uh, ten or fifteen for next year. Correct. And not twenty five. Well, well ten or fifteen, uh, I mean that's great performance this year, but can you anticipate a repeat? And what well, you to think great performance repeat? started last year also. We we were I believe uh, the year before last, we ended up with, I believe, it was forty-six or forty-eight thousand dollars as, as a, fund, a decrease in fund balance. The, the board has has approved and uh, allocated twenty-five thousand dollars for the past two years to that account. Right. So, and looking at last year's numbers, she kind of broke even for the year if she would have started with you know a zero fund balance. Mm -hmm. This year, the, the indicators are pretty much the same. Uh, to date, she's pretty much on target as she was a year ago last year. Uh, then again, uh, I looked at it tonight, Peter. It's, it's a close. I'm, I'm going to estimate, but I'll have a clear number for you by Thursday, 10 or 15,000 instead of 25. Well, I guess, you know, the, uh, just reviewing the bidding of the previous years, what we have wanted to do was treat this like all our other accounts. Mm -hmm. And if there's an underage or an overage, mm -hmm. Take that into the general account and start again with a zero, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that uh, we might be able to subsidize the food program next year with uh, $15,000 instead of twenty-five. Correct. Good. It's done well. They're, they're, uh, they're buying, they're, I guess they're doing group buying a lot better than they were two years ago. They've joined that co-op in the Southern Maine and they're pretty active. Okay. The curriculum district-wide was what we put in last year to indicate the portion of Michael Efren's time now that he's going as math coordinator. It's basically... Uh, Sorry, would you say that again? Uh, why does it go up 3.6%? Uh, basically, I think when we went through the process last year, Michael was not placed on, on step or anything. And after uh, after he was placed on, on the teacher scale and whatever and allocated a portion of time, the budget was formulated with, with an estimate of where he would be. And the 1977 is the actual that has been allocated to that. Okay, so this is just a repeat. That's correct. Okay, it's just a repeat of 91, 92. That's correct. Great. Okay, got it. So that I'm position sorry. is going to remain... Yes, I'm Same. recommending that. Yeah. Absolutely, I think that that's been uh, a useful, uh, and and uh, really am pleased with the way that's going. Michael is focused on math. Um, he is now teaching three, uh, three periods, two at the high school, one at the middle school, working uh, uh, in addition as um, a middleman for the entire district, uh, continuing to work on assessment. Um, He's an able advocate for math instruction, and I think this has been a good focusing issue. So the rest of his salary is allocated to teaching. That's correct. Okay. And, we, and it's in the, the it's two it's centers. One point one. That's correct, because he has some summertime too. Um, employee benefits. Is there anything that we need to talk about there? I mean, those are just routine kinds of figures. Debt service. Uh, those are, I think. The bond issues, bond issues. Uh, nothing new there. And the district-wide computers that are listed here are really coming in from uh, the middle school labs and not to <coughs> represent the larger picture that you have in um, both the summary sheet and the discussions you've had in the process. So that finishes out there. Okay. Any further questions okay. from the board? Yes, I have a question about computers. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is, I think, uh, 
that there's uh, $50,000 worth of computers requested from the various places. And um, I thought both in terms of keeping track of them, um, maintenance agreements on them, and also cataloging software, that it might be appropriate to ask if that couldn't be under a uh, system-wide account or a district-wide account. Um, right now, we have charged off um, to the math department at the high school and the math department and the science department at the high school a percentage of the computers that are going there. Um, I am concerned about um, budgets uh, carrying those uh, specifically when they're going to need them every single year. And uh, I think that this is just the beginning of a long-term uh, commitment outlay to uh, computers. I was wondering if that would be uh, anything that we could discuss, or maybe it doesn't need to be made here, or maybe somewhere else. But um, my concerns, quite frankly, are that we know where all the computers are at all times, and we can make the appropriate recommendations for upgrading and changing looking at a line as opposed to scattered amounts throughout. Well, I thought we agreed that before we approved the purchase of many computers that uh, we were going to get a one report which described not only this year's proposal, and maybe you've covered this tonight, have you? No. I got here? I, Peter, I'm not going to ever promise to do a full report in two weeks' time. I told you that before. <laughs> That's impossible. What we can do is what we have here, plus to remind you, go back over the issues that are heightened at the individual uh, cost centers where these came in. We don't have a system-wide committee on computers at this point. We can get one together, and I think that's clearly a target, but we don't have that at this point. I guess basically, Rosemary, is your question that we pull all the computer accounts and set up a district-wide computer? Yes. In terms of seeing how much we spend and you know, then keeping uh, in the central office where the computer actually is instead of the science department uh, purchasing you know, their computers and the math department purchasing theirs, that we know that we spent X number of dollars mm -hmm. on computers and we know how many machines sure. and the peripheral equipment that we have with them. Uh, this leads me to a bigger issue. Uh, and that is, uh, regardless of when our plan is done, it is surely going to suggest that we need to purchase additional computers every single year um, just to get up to where we should be. That coupled with the item that I asked to revisit, which is the movement of the kindergarten to the uh, high school and uh, some of those expenses in the $200,000 figure that I have uh, looked at as being capital outlays versus uh, expense items. Mm -hmm. um, also because I'm trying to um, economize here both on a uh, tax increase and also um, I think there are some cuts that we've made or some things that we might want to have that can't be in there. Uh, I'm glad you answered my question earlier in the day about do we really need $25,000 in that uh, school lunch account, but my bottom line is we have to go and ask the town council to approve a, a lending package for three years for a school bus, which is a capital outlay. Um, we have an opportunity to borrow at between 5 and 6 percent for a three-year uh, plan to fund the computers that we know we're going to have to buy. Um, there is a price war going on right now and uh, loads of opportunities to buy the hardware and software in the school districts. Um, and we really need more than we asked for. I mean, I spoke to many of the people who made the request, and I said, well, we got your request for five. How many do you really need? And you don't know about the 12 that they wanted, but they never got to us because they were cut before then. Um, I think there's economy of operation and scale of purchasing, and I think that for purposes of uh, putting a $250,000 expense, which is what those two items uh, amount to in the budget that everyone who lives in Cape Elizabeth next year and pays taxes next year is going to pay 100% of that program and I think it might be worth discussion about maybe spreading that cost out because the useful life uh, of the computers also the uh, renovations to the high school which are going to uh, result in a programming change also to fix the, the gym space that I noticed was left off uh, the plan, uh, there would be funds available to do all those things uh, right now um, when it's uh, much less expensive to do those and also the kids could have the benefit 
of the computers and the program, and we can make an actual commitment uh, to it all at once. And I would like to, to know, I mean, I can do a formal proposal. I've been talking back and forth with Dee about the numbers, what is truly a capital outlay, what is truly an expense. Uh, and since we have to ask the town council for approval anyway, uh, I just think that uh, it's like asking for a bond issue. The people that say no for 12 million are gonna say no for nine. So, you know, it's either uh, gonna work or it isn't. And I just. Well, we, we have a small debt service proportion. We know that that debt service proportion, we certainly hope that debt service proportion will go up as we start seriously addressing our building problems. The three-year note, which frankly is common practice in a lot of districts, it's not uncommon. Um, it was clear in the discussion last year, the council does not look on that favorably, but the suggestion you're making is certainly a very valid one. I would assume that, that we do in fact buy our computers by uh, as a system, I don't think we, we hit, we, you know, people aren't going out and making individual, at least I hope we're not doing that. Um, well, that's precisely what I'm not so sure of and why. And if that I don't is insist happening. in a report um, <laughs> in, in two weeks, but I do insist, uh, and I hope uh, some of you will join me in this, that the next purchase of computers is accompanied by a five year plan and that somebody who really understands this system, even if we have to go outside the system to get that expertise, uh, can justify buying, uh, as I see here, uh, 10 IBMs and uh, <coughs> 9 Macs uh, and uh, so on and so forth. I want to make sure that that's part of a long-term plan to adequately computerize this system. I also agree with what Rosemary said about we should have it as a system-wide account for the computer. Yeah, I, I, I really think, think that makes sense. sense. To um, do both things. Okay. And along that line, I, I called a couple of banks this afternoon to get you know some numbers out there as to what a three-year note or mm -hmm. one bank got back to me and, and a three-year uh, obligation bond set off for three years. The rate right now, he estimates at 4.75%. <laughs> and they're 50 percent off right now so so but I th it's an think, opportunity I think we might explore it and speak to, to to the town to see if they have any items that they might go out and bond also so we could okay. do this together in one other point then in purchasing it in bulk in these computers just looking at these numbers they, they don't look like great deals in terms of the Macintosh that's the that's side that I know that's retail. That's something I could go out and buy yeah. one at a time, pretty much. If these are the numbers we're really looking at, and if we were looking at a big ticket purchase, you know, I think we would want to bid perhaps outside of Portland. Portland doesn't have a big computer market, um, and if we have a big, if we have a big ticket sale, we could probably do something better in terms of what we're able to purchase. Yeah, the, the, the one of the problems I know relatively little about this that. Uh, that Apple has a, a very systematic marketing plan. And for example, recently Harper was the vehicle through which uh, you purchased uh, Macintosh and Apples. And uh, suddenly, a few months ago, it was switched to Coastal. And that decision was made in California. And they were assigned Cumberland County, I gather, and Harper, or Cumberland and York, and Harper was assigned the rest of uh, the state. Now, why that, uh, why that is, or you know, how the pricing works in there is, uh, certainly something to look at, but, and, and maybe we can go out of state to get them uh, less expensively, or maybe we can bargain a little. But let's look into it before we do it. Well, I think that, again, these figures at this stage of the budget, uh, and at this stage of where this district has been on computers, um, are certainly unrefined figures. There's no question that if whatever money we have in the budget ultimately as a result of this process for computers, I would certainly expect that we'd go through a system-wide buy package and there's no question about that. The issue that I'm, I'm wrestling with myself in order to try to answer you both honestly and answer your, uh, meet your needs, meet our needs, um, I expressed this the other night, I do not see this system as having gone through the kind of evolution on the use of computers that I've seen in other systems. I mean, we were really, you've got to a certain point, boom, with a proficiency, and you have a, the Apple II lab and, and the program at the middle school. Recently, there's been a flurry of interest in computers at the high school, a kind of generative 
kind of thing going on, and I think the really the most promising long-range planning I've seen is from the librarians. There's a, there is a clear plan there. There's a clear sense of where they want to go. Um, not all the pieces are filled in, but uh, and I think it also meshes very nicely with some of the discussions we're having in curriculum. Um, I just have been through this, and I know what a tough cookie it is to get hold of a system wide, generalized, absolutely guaranteed program that takes into account where the teachers are and where the state of the technology is and what's going to get used and what isn't. Now, I think we have a clear obligation to get busy on that. Well, that, that's question. a great argument for going even further and uh, getting a teacher for the teachers, which another neighboring district is studying right now, mm -hmm. I happen to have heard. Sure. They, oh, yeah. They're going to. They're going to bring in a, a computer expert to teach the teachers, and, and uh, maybe we ought to be thinking uh, not of spending our money just on hardware and software, but also on some <coughs> teaching, some system uh, analysis, and mm -hmm. take Thank away Rosemary. I, I was just going to let you know uh, there could be nothing formally stated at this point, but I do want you to know that informally uh, there was work being done um, to make a proposal to the board just such a thing and it includes hardware software and uh, teaching mm -hmm. so um, and I am doing it um, let's look at it um, but we're just not I had to get permission to proceed um, and then we have to go through uh, a number of rungs on the ladder but uh, it is being looked at so I, I will be able to uh, give something to the board long view uh, without specifics but the point that I was asking for here is that if we're going to make a, a commitment to technology then if we could do it in a system wide account and have the money there because if we have an opportunity uh, it may be a matching situation and if we don't have the funds available then we'll, it's like the bus I mean, you either meet the uh, parameters uh, or you don't and it's uh, it's a terrible opportunity to lose. That's right. So that's the, the my position. And the, the elementary has a proposal for some summer work for teaching teachers how to utilize the computers that are in their classroom. That's so right. again, these are strands of exactly. all Exactly, they're strands. Let's <laughs> surround it. Pull them together. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I agree. I just think that the, uh, and I think it's interesting. Um, I was puzzled. Last year, um, there seemed to be a lot of energy in the system about computerizing. And so maybe what's happening is that as a result of some of the, um, for instance, the computers that the elementary got through the uh, auction last year, um, the voyage of the Mimi, you know, there are a few things now that are actually happening that people are uh, wetting their curiosity to go further and so on. Um, I, I hear you. Any more comments from the board? Are there any comments from the public about anything we've discussed this evening? Hearing none, I will turn the meeting back over to the chairman. Thank you. Okay, well that concludes our meeting for tonight. Our next one is Thursday evening here at 7.30. We're going to a special meeting. Okay. We need to go into public session. And then effect. That's right. Yeah, right. Right. We can do that upstairs because, in fact, we've given notice that we're going upstairs to have go into a public session and immediately into executive session. So we're not just.